until such point as you know, they'll get civil unrest and then okay, they might just sort of back off a tad. So what the next step is going to be is the merger of the American Union with the EU, making it the most powerful economic bloc obviously in the world. It will be totally dominant economically and it will very quickly swallow up all the other trade communities. All under the banner of the United Nations. The symbolism of the United Nations flag is very significant. That grid that's over the top of the world is very significant. This very aggressive looking symbol underneath it. Anybody recognize that symbol? It's the World Bank. The World Bank. And a book that I would highly recommend to you. By the way, I don't usually bring so much of my research material. But with this particular subject, so many people think that this is just fantasy. I I have to bring some material so that if you want, later on, you can come and have a look for yourselves. But this is a book called The Confessions of an Economic Hitman by a guy called John Perkins, who spent many years working for the World Bank or for subsidiaries of the World Bank. And his job was to go into developing nations and persuade the governments to buy in to massive credit plans, basically to bring that developing nation government into hock. Because just like on the microcosm, you know, once you've got an individual in serious debt, basically you've got them under control. And the same thing with the macrocosm. If you can get a nation into serious debt, then you, know, you basically have them where you want them. And it shouldn't come as any great surprise to you that there's, some, there's a very common denominator between all the countries that are classified as the axis of evil. This Bush term. And it's the countries like Cuba, um, North Korea, Iran, recently Russia. Anyone, anybody wondered why Russia has been demonized in the media basically for the last six months? Well, all of these countries, oh, and Venezuela, of course and an increasing number of Latin American countries as Venezuela and Chavez starts to find ways to help these guys out of their debt to the World Bank. These guys, all of these countries that are part of the axis of evil are free of debt. And Russia paid off its last instalment for all the billions that it borrowed after the collapse of the Soviet bloc back in 1990. So Putin had actually done an amazing job by appointing the seven ugly sisters, the seven oligarchs, to manage the industrial recovery. Of course, some of those oligarchs got a little bit too carried away and just wanted a bit too much power, and that's why you know, Putin has a bit of a problem with one or two of them. But his strategy was absolutely sound, because what he did was he identified the best guys in the country to take their particular industries and bring them you know, back up to full speed, and obviously enable Russia to become self-sufficient. And Russia is in exactly that position right now. The World Bank has a couple of henchmen to carry out its will. And that is the World Trade Organization, which has been around since 1995, and the World Health Organization. Now, these two organizations are complete misnomers, because let me assure you that the World Trade Organization has nothing really to do with world trade. And the World Health Organization definitely has nothing to do with health. Basically, any country that is signed up to membership of the World Trade Organization is effectively under the auspices of the UN. So anything that the World Trade Organization deems to be law, the member countries have to abide by. And I'll give you one example that you won't be aware of. The World Trade Organization have deemed it quite legitimate for the U.S. to export its hormone-impregnated beef. And it sees no reason why any nation, certainly any member nation, should reject the importation of um, uh, contaminated beef, i.e. contaminated with the growth hormone. The EU at the moment refuses to import the American beef So the EU has to pay a fine to the World Trade Organization of 150 million euros a year. Because we don't want their contaminated beef. And that fine will increase. As we continue to, as the EU continues to reject it, then the fine increases until they can, you know, make the pit squeak. And in the end, what they expect you to do is go, okay, okay, we take it. Now, who's going to eat it? Well, but you won't know. Because a big part of Codex 
is to remove the labelling on foods, as we shall see. Even the sun. I mean, it makes a change for the sun to actually have words on the front cover, but... <laughs> Never have so few decided so much for so many. And earlier, I think it was this week, Trevor Kavanagh, who, I mean, I've been saying for many years that this guy is the most important political commentator in the country. He's Australian. But he is Murdoch's political man writing for the sun. 13 million people a day read or at least skim on what this guy has to say in terms of uh, political comment. And in this article, which I think I have a copy over here if anybody wants to look at it, in this article he's basically saying, my God, you know, aren't the British people waking up to what's occurring? Now I don't believe that he for one minute wants to stop, nor does his boss Murdoch want to stop it. What they're doing is they're just testing the water. And they're saying, you know, how far can we push these people? And there's no reaction, of course. The New World Order. What is the objectives of the New World Order? One world government, one world economy, one world religion, theirs, and the population of less than one billion people. And you think, well, that's, that's ridiculous. That's not going to happen. But let me tell you, there are organizations, and they're becoming even more open about this goal to reduce the population. I just want to um, flag up this, because this is very significant. The Club of Rome is, a, is a, um, effectively an inner group within the... Uh, well, the Bilderbergers were a spin-off of the Club of Rome. But this is... The people who sit on this think tank are you know, deep within the inner workings. And this particular report is the first ever mention that I can find of global warming. Now read this very carefully. It goes, in searching for a new enemy to unite us, because this was written immediately after the fall of the Soviet Empire, so the Cold War was ostensibly over. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution... The threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention. And then this wonderful payoff line at the bottom, the real enemy then is humanity itself. You know, the whole idea of these guys, their agenda, these guys are very, very cute. They're very smart. Take nothing away from them. They know their game. They're very good at it. They've had many years to practice. So what they do is they come up with stuff like this to keep us chasing our tail. You know, and, and basically keep us sort of focused. I mean, all this green stuff. Oh, by the way, the, the press said that, that I'm a green campaigner. I'm not a green campaigner. I'm a campaigner for truth and political integrity. No, I'm not a green in any way. I'm about choice and honesty. You know, and what these guys are making very clear is that they will come up with an agenda that keeps people locked into this vicious cycle, you know, and we can tax them for it. We can come up with all these green taxes. I mean, this, this stuff about peak oil, I mean, uh, the DVD of the talk that I gave here a few weeks ago on peak oil will be available uh, very shortly. Look at the evidence. Look at the backlog of aircraft. Look at what the oil companies are doing. Peak oil, at best, is 50, 100 years away. What I'm talking to you about tonight is two and a half years away and less. This wonderful piece of work, Dr. Eric Pianka, professor of zoology at the University of Texas in Austin, and he made a speech less than two years ago, and he said, um, basically, the top scientist gave a speech to the Texas Academy of Science in which he advocated the need, listen carefully, to exterminate 90% of the population through the airborne Ebola virus. Dr. Pianca's chilling comments and their enthusiastic reception again underscore the elite. Join us next week, people, for part two in our three part series with Mr. Ian Crane. His conversations about Codex Elementaries. This is a test of the emergency bomb hit system. The bomb hitters in your area and voluntary defiance of federal, state, and local authorities have developed this system to keep you informed in the event of a bomb hit emergency. If this had been an actual emergency, the attention signal you just heard would have been followed by official supply information, police scanner news, and emergency bomb hitting instructions. This concludes this test of the emergency bomb hit system. Wake up, America!